podcast to talk about the merits of Sonic, a podcasting application for your Android cellular phone. <laughs> for me, the Grey Wounds are a job, a project I have devoted considerable time and effort to see into completion. For you, they are entertainment. Listening to entertainment, I am told, should be easy. The Sonnet application makes it effortless to listen to horrific explorations of the human condition. They make use of a clean design and a user-friendly interface to effortlessly discover new programs, listen to your favorites, and keep up to date with the newest iteration of the rooms. Sonnet costs nothing. If this application sounds interesting, follow the link in this episode's description to discover Sonnet. And hope against hope. You do not end up in the Grey Rooms. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jason, the creator of The Grey Rooms. Happy Halloween! (laughs) Well, we of course could not create this show without your support and want to thank our wonderful patrons for allowing us to do what we love, terrifying you. (laughs) If you would like to support the show and become a patron, jump on over to patreon.com forward slash The Grey Rooms today and find the tier that's right for you and become a lovely patron. Patrons like Laura Lupinetti, Emily Cullen, Lynn Browning, Jessica Finch, Paige H. 3.14, Haley's Vomit, Ellie Dowell, Stacy Thewis, Megan Pruitt, Michael Philip BG, Jackal Bot Snows, The Original Nick Show, Jason Porras, Michael Velez, Diver Ellie, Patrick Stewart, Kelly Bear, Amy Nikolai, Brooks Bigley, Arthur Unk, Teresa Tabor, Mitch Gerrits, Melissa Novoa, Antoinette Portillo, Michael Zenke, Matt, Denise Pinto, Michael Beckwith, Godzilla Eyes, Jeremy Schaefer, Trigvi Christensen, Rachel Lamb, Hale Scherf, Charlotte Norrip, Callisto Aris, Christopher Baker, Darren Hampson, Ronald Watson, Nightmare Rabbit, Sarah Zartaloma, Debbie Furr, Scotty, Sergio Saucedo, Mark Taus, Sky Isa, Cassie Pertit, Brad Bone, J.M. Scherf, John Grills, Justin Thulu, John, Barry Fisher, Brian Bridges, Rebecca Edwards, Ursula Person, and Kathleen Clyde. Also, stay tuned to the credits after the show for a very special announcement. Shadows fall across the land. The house stands open, close to hand. Voices call out on the air. Your steps draw closer, a siren's snare. You know not how you came to be, lost and broken, adrift at sea. Musty carpets cross which you tread. Within you grows a cold, hard dread. A foulest reek flows to your lungs. The funk of eons, worlds far flung. 
The sound of chains bounce off the walls, closing in from every hall. In dearest hope to stay alive, as your body starts to shiver, you step inside an open door. Around you swirls tenebrous gloom, and you belong to the old gray rooms. This episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. Come. Evening, Mum. You wanted to see me? Yes, Todd. Thank you for coming. Please, take a seat. I'll be just another moment here. Ugh. Well, thank you kindly, Mum. I don't mind taking a load off. It's quite the office you have here. Oh, I don't think I've seen a personal domain quite like this one. Such nice furniture. So many books. <coughs> oh, that's a nice bird you have there in the cage. A parakeet, eh? Reminds me of the little flip wings that used to peep about in the trees outside my room when I was a kid. If, Mum, if it's about the thing that happened with Samantha, uh, Miss, Miss Winters, uh, well, oh, I'm awfully sorry. I, I didn't know what I was doing. She got me head somehow. Oh, I've had these awful nightmares ever since. Uh, it's like I told the warden after he were done with me. I never would have done what I did if, he, if I was in my right mind. Todd, how long have you been with the programme? Oh, uh, quite a while now. Yeah, it's hard to keep time from where I'm sitting, you know. Uh, however long it's been since the warden pulled me out of the pit. For your edification, you died 247 years ago. You have been with the programme for 156 years, 7 months and 12 days. You were the main participant in the rooms for 34 years, give or take a few months. An impressive long run, given your somewhat limited mental faculties. And since the end of your tenure in the rooms, since your breaking point, you have served as a sort of pet for the warden. <laughs> that sounds about right. And then you let our participant get the better of you. The most successful run the Grey Rooms has had to date. And you let her breach the wall. Well, like I said, Mum, it wasn't my fault. No, not really. I am a relative latecomer to the project, Todd. I have only been with management for 100 years, 4 months and 3 days. Oh, that's amazing. Your century mark. Congratulations. But in that time, in that brief time, I feel I have made significant contributions. Uh, of course you have, Mum. That's why they call you the architect, after all. 
It's a title I accept, but do not appreciate. For isn't it true, Todd, that the rooms are something we construct together? I make plans. I try to foresee how events may unfold. But you're as much a builder of the Grey Rooms as I am, as the Warden is. As much a builder as... him. No, oh, well, yeah. that's a real compliment coming from you, Bob. He's taken a lot of shoulders, he has, yeah. And of course, the Warden was in here from the beginning. Uh, just him and uh, uh, management. <laughs> oh, I was a little worried getting called in here, you know. I, I thought I might have been on the docket for some kind of punishment. I mean, I mean, more punishment. Ooh, the warden did a number on me. Ooh. You're not hearing me, little man. Eh? If you and I are both builders of the rooms, if you and I are equal partners in this project then I need to be able to hold you to the same standard I hold myself. <sighs> what kind of standard do you think I hold myself to? Um, high. Yes, that's right, Todd. A high standard. Do you think you have lived up to this standard? Uh... Be honest now. N n no. Mom, not, not not recently. Why? I I got, got too friendly with a participant, didn't I? I uh, no, she seemed nice, uh, like a whole real person, and I let her get too close. She never cared to know me. Yes, Todd, you should not have done that. What else? I let her. I, I let her use a. Uh, a power on me. Uh, if I hadn't let her get so close, she might not have had the chance. Again, correct. Ms. Winter's ability should have been contained, and its reappearance was not something you could have planned for. Nevertheless, your lapse in judgment gave her the opening she needed to exploit your mistake. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? I, I, I don't, I don't think so, Ma. Otherwise, I try to do my job the same as I always do. I share your assessment, Todd. The warden is often a challenging individual to work with, and you handle the assignment with a plum. You have accurately assessed your errors in judgment and didn't shy away from admitting your failures when asked. <sighs> oh, thank you, ma'am. How do you propose you should be punished? Oh, I, uh, punished? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> High standards, Todd. You failed. Ms. Winters was made inviolable. And we had to clean up after you. What should I do with you? Oh, don't suppose we can let this go with a, with a slap on the wrist, eh? Is your slap on the wrist? Yes, yes, I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh. Now then, slap on the wrist as you suggested. But I think further punishment is in order. When was the last time you entered the rooms? <coughs> the rooms? Yes. Focus. The rooms. I think a fitting punishment would be for you to have to enter the rooms. It's been a very long time since you tested out a locus for us, hasn't it? Yes, yes, ma'am. Well then, 
It just so happens I've gotten our first one up and running in the space we'll be using for our next participant. Come in. You wanted to see us? Come in and shut the door. Todd is just leaving. Sure. Todd, I want you to head back down to the project and ask for Rydizab. He'll get you going. Right back here afterwards. Understood? Looks like your room is called The Screaming Woman. Let me know how it goes. Yes, Mum. And try not to bleed on anything on your way down, for Satan's sake. Ah, just us now. How nice. Those rooms all cleared out? Yes, ma'am. Delightful. Come, sit. I have so many questions. You wanted to know about the rooms from the inside, right? Oh, yes. Yes. In a moment. I mostly said that for listening ears. Then... what? Tell me... Everything that you know about Bob. At exactly 1.20 a.m. every night, a woman screams outside my house. I genuinely thought that kind of scream only existed in movies. I moved here because I thought it would be quiet, peaceful, completely different from the drug-induced, fast-paced blur of a life I'd lived in the city. After nearly dying from taking something laced with something else coated in another thing, I decided I needed to stop. I quit my job at the trendy salon downtown and got hired at the local soccer mom hangout. It was slow-paced, every haircut and color was the same, and I loved it. For the first time in five years, I could actually remember everything that happened every day. The house was small and comfortable. The outside was a pale, dusty pink with a white border, and the small yard was overgrown with weeds. The inside amazed me because I honestly didn't realize that you could buy that many different shades of light green paint. It reminded me of a grandmother's wet dream, and it was perfect. First nights in new houses are always the hardest. So when I woke up at 1.20 a.m. with the echo of a scream in my ears, I didn't really think much of it. I honestly thought I'd been having a nightmare. The next night when it happened, I was fully conscious and sorting through books when it happened. I grabbed my baseball bat and shot out the door, racing to the street. It sounded like it was right outside, like a woman had just been brutally murdered on my shitty lawn. Where the hell was she? My yard, the street, the neighbor's yards, all were empty. I expected to see someone bleeding out in my yard. All I saw were dandelions. After looking around for a while, I ultimately gave up and chalked it up to neighborhood idiots. Maybe this was some sort of weird high schooler thing where instead of cow tipping, they went ding dong screaming. I decided to go back inside, locking my doors and pulling the drapes tight. 
I didn't really sleep well that night. The scream lingering in my ears. The next morning, I begrudgingly went outside to try and take care of the disaster area that was my front yard. I had these big dreams of converting it into a garden oasis. The only way that was going to happen was by me actually going out there and doing it, which sucked. You must be my new neighbor. I looked up and saw a woman who was probably in her late 50s smiling at me and waving. I smiled back and walked over, putting my hair up in a ponytail as I went. Hi, I'm Mia. Nice to meet you, Mia. My name's Eden. She stuck her hand out and I shook it, nodding slightly. So, I, I gotta ask, did you hear that screaming last night? Of course I did, dear. The whole street has at some point or another. What do you mean? Eden shrugged, motioning to my front lawn. It happens every night, for as long as anyone can remember. From what I understand, it was happening even before this land was developed. She leaned in, conspiratorial. I think it has something to do with the Earth's magnetic field myself. I stared at her for a few seconds, trying to wrap my head around what she was saying. This seriously happens every night? Why do people still live here? Oh, well... Aside from that, it's a very nice and quiet neighborhood. Why throw away the whole batch when only one egg is spoiled, you know? You'll get used to it after a while. Just give it a few days, and soon you won't even hear it at night. A few days turned into a few months, and I barely slept anymore. I was so beyond obsessed with the screaming woman that I would stay awake every night to get a small glance of her. I figured out that if you stand just right while looking out the window, you could see a soft shimmer when she screamed. I must have searched every combination of words possible to try and dig up more about her. Apparently, the house was built in 1972. Before that, it was just an empty plot. I stumbled onto an amateur ghost hunter website that mentioned the house and the woman. They'd written an article dated 2004 detailing a ghost hunt in my house. They were able to catch a few snippets of audio at 1.19 a.m. The article said, over the course of three nights, we ran EVPs. We asked the spirit different questions each time, but never got a direct intelligent response. However, on the second night, we were able to catch a male voice talking. There was a link to play the audio. I turned my speakers up and hit play. There was static at first, then... The article continued, This phenomenon only happened the one night and we believe it was able to manifest because a crew member had been working on their car and had the hood open to reveal the battery. When she tried to start her car the next day, it wouldn't turn. The whole car was dead. It went on to describe what they thought this new male voice was trying to say, but they didn't come to any firm conclusions. I hit play again and listened a couple times in a row. I leaned back in my chair, closing my eyes. The voice sounded vaguely familiar. Like when you see an actor and you're trying to remember what movie you saw them in recently. There was a contact number at the top of the article belonging to someone by the name of Spectral Sam. Okay then. Hello. 
He answered on the third ring. His voice was thin and scraggly, and I imagined he looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Hi, is this, uh, Spectral Sam? Uh, please, just call me Sam. I cannot express to you the amount of regret I feel every time someone calls me that. I blinked a couple of times, not sure how to respond to that. You're obviously calling about that stupid website Blue refuses to take down. Yeah, actually, it's about one of the articles you wrote. about the article I wrote where I claim Bigfoot is an alien with a penchant for hopping parallel dimensions. I'm gonna have to hang up. No, 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 no. Uh, it's about the screaming woman. What about her? Well, uh, I live in that house now, and I've been trying to figure out what's going on, you know? Uh, how long have you lived there? About three months now? Why? you find? I stood up and started to pace. The range of emotions this man had already gone through was causing my anxiety to spike. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, you need to leave that house, uh, either for good or temporarily before August 6th. I looked over at my calendar. Today was July 22nd, about two weeks. Did you hear me? You cannot be there on August 6th. I heard you. That's in less than a month. Why can't I be here? What happens? I talked to the neighbor. I'd heard rumors of activity coming to my head on that date, so I begged Blue to go back with me. My plan was to take a couple of fully charged car batteries and place them in different locations around the property. Blue wanted nothing to do with it, said there was no money in it. I I needed to know, though. She She haunted me since the first night I heard her scream. The raw pain and fear in her voice. The betrayal. I needed to understand what she was trying to tell us. So I went by myself. I didn't dare interrupt him. I'd stopped pacing and stared out the window at the spot where I'd seen shimmering. Now I understand that I have no way of proving what I'm about to tell you. I was so focused on finally seeing her, that I didn't record anything. I wasn't running audio. I wasn't filming. I didn't even get a damn photo. You just have to believe me. (sighs) After everything I've seen so far, I'm pretty sure I'm going to believe you. I pinched at the hem of my shirt. I could understand the desperation he was going through, the obsession to know more. It's what drove me to have this exact conversation. This is the moment where I look back and wish I'd done things differently. If only I'd hung up right then and there. I was warned, but when everything came to a head, I forgot. I had the knowledge in my hands, and I threw it away. The night started the same as it did two years ago. Before 1 a.m., nothing happened. Once that clock hit, though, there was a swirl of activity. It was kind of beautiful in a way. I know that sounds crazy, but when you devote yourself to stuff like this, and exactly at 1 a.m. you see the locked door open and close by itself, a sound of keys landing on the table, it was beautiful. I was in awe. For a while after that, it was pretty quiet. There was movement as the apparition moved around, but... Nothing out of the ordinary for a ghost. At 1.18, things changed. A male voice, the one you heard on the first recording, started shouting from outside the house. Honestly, it was so crisp and clear that I thought there was a living dude calling me a bitch and demanding I come outside. 
I ran to the window and I saw this shimmering outline, just an impression of a person. Maybe if I had placed all of the car batteries outside. Uh, anyway, a few seconds after the shouting started, the front door flew open and she took shape. Long hair whipped around her in a breeze that only existed for her. I never saw her face. She paused just outside the door frame and they sized each other up. When she moved forward, I slipped out behind her, needing to see the whole scene unfold. I knew I couldn't save her. Couldn't warn her what was about to happen. She was already dead. So was he. I think. Watching felt like the next best thing, like maybe I could help her rest if others knew her story. She never spoke a word. That's something I think about every goddamn day. Why didn't she? Say something. Yell, maybe. Say the attacker's name. Remember me? <sighs> Remember me, baby doll? He has the low voice. She didn't even wait for a reply before he said, You should never have left. He raised the gun that glinted in the moonlight. Two quick shots rang out in that when she screamed. This dark red blood manifested out of nowhere. There was so much. I watched as it spurted in thick waves from a convulsing body. I think one of the bullets hit an important artery. I started to feel the pain too, in my chest and my stomach. I collapsed into the ground. The last thing I saw was a woman go still and the man walk away disappearing after crossing the battery threshold. Three days later, I woke in the hospital. The doctor said I'd suffer from a heart attack brought on by the stress. He said I was lucky that a neighbor had been awake and looked out a window. I hadn't caught medical attention as quick as I did. I would have died on that lawn. <sighs> I haven't been back since. I don't want to go back. She still haunts me. Years of exhaustive research and I've never found the name. Blue was pissed that I'd done an investigation without him. After he refused to even read what I'd written about that night, I left the group. I didn't know what to say. Did I believe him? Did I want to? I had to. I heard her screams every night. So, what do I do? Get out. Sell the house. Be fallen your loan. Anything. Just get the hell out. I can't. I spent every last cent buying this place. I, I cannot just up and leave because a ghost might give me a heart attack. I felt hysterical at this point, but I didn't give a flying fuck. I deserved to sit in my yard at twilight and listen to the crickets. I deserved to sleep through the night. I didn't have another opportunity to start over. This was my happily ever after, and now Spectral Sam and the Screaming Woman were trying to rip that out of my shaking hands. Did you not hear me earlier? I almost died. There's no safety measures when it comes to the supernatural. You either face it head on, or you get the hell out of Dodge. I know this is a lot, kid, but listen to me. Stay away from that house on August 6th. I think he knew that I wasn't going to listen. Thank you for everything, Sam. Sure thing. Let me know if you need anything else. I hung up and collapsed on my couch. I didn't heed Sam's warning. And on August 4th, I was fired from my job. I'd been calling out more than I'd been coming in. And when I was in, I wasn't really there. It didn't stop the anger, though, and it didn't stop me from breaking my careful sobriety. I was stressed and upset and felt so goddamn helpless. The only solace I could find was at the bottom of a bottle. Most of that night and the next day were a blur. By the time I got home on the 6th, I was exhausted. I just wanted to sleep forever. 
My keys hit the coffee table as I walked in, and I made a beeline for the bathroom. I barely registered that something seemed off. I took my time getting ready for bed. I was pretty drunk and didn't want to stab myself in the eye with a toothbrush. It wasn't until I was climbing into bed that the yelling outside my house started. There's this theory that everything is happening at the same time. The Big Bang happened in the past, yeah. But it's also happening now, and it's happening in the future. All your breakups are happening at the same time. All your smiles, all your tears, all your victories. I never believed it because it was so hard to comprehend. Time is linear. Things happened in steps and bounds and tiptoes. It was sequential. There was no way time was this jumbled mess of moments slipping through your fingers and then you die. Hey, bitch! Get out here! His voice partially dispelled the fog in my brain. I know you're in there, bitch! Come out now! I staggered out of bed and raced to the front, throwing the door open. The man standing on my lawn was tall, with dark hair pulled back into a bun, black jeans, black t-shirt. A breeze caused the trees to groan and shake in the night, throwing out my hair and covering my face. He looked so familiar. Why did he look familiar? Remember me, baby doll? He flashing a wide, glinting grin at me. Baby doll. Baby doll. The party. The party that sent me to the hospital. He was the one who sold me the pills. Those stupid little pills cost a lot of money, and in my haze, I would bought one for every single one of my friends. I... I must have owed this man thousands of dollars. You should have never left. Time is just a big fucked up circle, and everything I ever believed was a lie. I'm the screaming girl outside my house. I'm going to keep dying over and over and over again until something breaks the loop. I'll be forced to watch myself move into my house, watch myself live and die over and over again. Maybe someday there will be a way out of this. Maybe someone new will come along. Maybe they'll die and I can be free. Maybe it'll be you, unsuspecting and carefree, just like I was. You should pray it's not you. Because if it is, and you don't die fast enough, I swear, on my grave, that I will kill you. The Screaming Woman, written by Kylie Ladwig, with performances by Aaron Lillis as Mia, Margaret Ashley as Eden, Alastair Mackey as Sam, and Graham Rowett as the killer. The Architect was written by Michael Zenke, featuring performances by Alastair Mackey as Todd, Margaret Ashley as the Architect, Raymond J. Lee as Steve, and Blanca Camacho as Molly. Musical composition by J.M. Scherf. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. Social media and Patreon management by Brooks Bigley. Videography by Hale Scherf. Audio engineering and sound design was by me, Jason Wilson. We hope you enjoyed our second preseason episode. It won't be long before season three will be debuting at the end of November. But, as a special announcement, we've recently received a memo from management on some changes being implemented to the rooms this year. Let's take a look. <clears throat> okay. Due to the high expectation of our upcoming participant in the rooms, 
we'll be implementing three new changes with the hope of better results and containment. First, we'll be extending their stay. Instead of 13 episodes a season, we'll be increasing production to 20. We'll be, oh, what? Instead of 13 episodes a season, we'll be increasing production to 20. <sighs> 20. Okay, all right, well, okay, all right. What else to say? Second, we have been giving our audience too much time to recover from the horror of the rooms. It's been decided that instead of a bi-weekly release schedule, we will now be releasing new episodes every Friday. Huh. <laughs> and lastly, our behind the door episodes, where we interrogate the authors and actors for information on how to torture our guests, will now be released on Wednesdays of the following week, giving listeners two episodes each week to dive into and keeping their fear on high. <sighs> Great. All right, well, management says. And, you know, we are really excited about this season and want to ask you, if you've not taken the time yet to leave us a five-star rating and review, please wander that way and do so now. Those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. The Grey Rooms is also streaming for free on Spotify. Just get the Spotify app or open the browser and search The Grey Rooms. And we here at The Grey Rooms love our fans and we want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. We have a lot of fun things to show you and I hope that you like it. You can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your uh, needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to sport, showing the world you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And don't forget, if you really want to stay up to date, jump on over to our Discord channel and come say hi to everybody. That includes authors, actors, Bob, the warden, a whole bunch of people are hanging out there in the Discord channel. So feel free to jump on in and join in the conversation today. Again, we appreciate you and hope that you have enjoyed this second preseason episode of our third season. Wow, third season has come fast. But with the extension of our, uh, <laughs> our releases and being the third season, we still have a lot of work left to do. So we're going to go ahead and get back to that so that we can release this on time. So thanks again, and we will see you in a few weeks.